Hey there, folks, and welcome to another update on the ongoing volcanic eruption in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Saturday, July 26, and leaving on a trip to the Grand Canyon early this next week. So I thought I'd throw together one more Iceland update before I left on that trip. We'll see what happens during that week while I'm gone. Um, the eruption may end. It could keep going. We're just going to have to see. But thanks again for joining me. And let's go through the latest information here. I want to show you some imagery, uh, some great video captured by our good friend Isak, who has done drone flights over the area. Look at the data and whatnot. Um, so here is the webcam view. I think the most important thing uh, to note is that even though the webcam view does not seem to indicate that we have an eruption going on, it's still happening. There's still lava coming out of this crater. So this is day 11. Since this eruption began, we have one spatter cone vent that is still uh, erupting. And we'll look at the GPS data in a little bit. There's some interesting connections there. Uh, if we go back here, so on this webcam image that's live here, let's make it live. It uh, doesn't look like much other than gases is going on. But if you scroll back enough, uh, well, you might see fog. Or if you go back to, let's see. You just kind of start scrolling back you might see some periods like right there there was a little period with uh some yeah right there you can see some lava shooting out of the vent right there so there are places and, and times there's a little bit more right there so you can't see it's still erupting uh the the crater is so steep and, and the lava is kind of sitting down low inside that cone and so it's largely the webcam view is largely obscured by the cone itself and you know unless you get a bigger explosion like what we saw there you just don't see much of the lava coming out of it but it is pouring out of the east side and then building a and adding volume to a flow field out on that east side uh, let me show you instead of this view here uh, so again ESAC did a live stream drone flight earlier today over the area and so this is a much better view of what it looks like kind of Kind of going in there so as we kind of roll forward here with his footage um and we get a little closer here to the crater of this spatter cone you will see the lava kind of erupting there so it is chugging along it's still erupting obviously the eruption rates and the output is much more reduced than what we saw previously but it's probably i think it's been doing this level or about this level for a few days now and this could continue for days and maybe even weeks we've seen that behavior before i believe with the the march 2024 eruption so a couple just highlights here from isak's uh video and again i have a link to his um live stream in the description you should probably check that out uh it'd be a good idea to subscribe to his channel as well because he does these periodically and oftentimes produces some of the best footage we have of the actual eruption but let me move you through here to a different time here let's go forward and so here yeah you can see the lava kind of erupting there coming out of the crater spilling over the side of the crater and then filling out and, and spilling into and filling in this flow field out here to the east let me take you to a couple other views here he ended up doing two flights out there um i found a couple things to be pretty interesting let me get you to the right sort of timestamp here. Here he is going back between flights, battery change, and then going back out for the second flight. Um, so there's a nice view here of, there you go, bit better overview there that actually shows the cone looking to the west there. You can see the spillover from that lava coming out this east side and channelized and then broadening out and spilling out into this large flow field here. It looks a, like a lot of what's happening in the flow field is not expanding much laterally. It's actually thickening. A lot of that lava is running underneath uh, the crust there. And so it's actually thickening from within, if you will. Um, a couple, let's go a couple other spots here. And a lot of times I find what's, uh, and I guess we've talked about this on my drone flight with Nature Eye, is, you know, the, the vent's pretty awesome and it's neat to see the lava erupting at the vent. But I've always found the flow fields to have most of the action. And so in this little section here, you can see the lava kind of coming out in these multiple channels, crusted over here. It's kind of blocking 
uh, the flow a little bit. These crustal blocks are somewhat um, blocking some of that flow, but you can see some of the overspill, these breakouts from where these cool crustal slabs have kind of hardened. The lava underneath is molten. It moves out. Then you can see some of these crustal slabs breaking off and actually sinking. That's a process called crustal foundering. So these black slabs of lava are a little bit more dense and more brittle than the molten material. So they're, they'll tend to sink when they're surrounded or run over by the lava itself. Let me just take you on a little bit of a tour here. He got some great imagery. Here's another kind of breakout and another kind of overturning uh, lava section here. Let's watch that for a second. Um, great imagery here of this crustal foundering. So there's some big crustal slabs sinking down into this lava that's kind of welling up here. So again, this is much more, well, less dense than the black slabs themselves. And that's why you see the crust oftentimes recycle itself in this manner. So some cool stuff happening here out on the flow field. Again, you wouldn't be able to approach this area on foot. And so the drone is a great tool to actually kind of see this all in action. Um, so again, thanks to Isak for allowing me to show these after his live stream, and I'll put his link in the description. So fantastic um, imagery there. Um, okay, so that's some of the things that have been happening out on the flow field so far. Let's look at our latest Met Office update. We do have winds out of the west today. I'll, I'll come back to that here in a second. We'll look at the gas, uh, the gas activity as well. Um, so the big highlights from the Met Office, and this was from yesterday around uh, noon, just before noon. So volca volcanic activity decreased but remained stable. Flows to the east and southeast. A uh, little movement on the edges of the flow. So again, it's not really spreading out laterally, but it's mainly thickening. It's, it's inflating from within. Um, let's see. A thin shell is formed on top of the lava and can rupture without warning. So that's sort of a, a bit of uh, a caution to the tourists that are out there. Um, and yeah, deformation measurements, so no changes beneath Svartsangi magma flow considers to be in equilibrium. We'll get to that when we look at some of the GPS data here. Um, and maybe we'll just kind of get to their paragraph on that here. Deformation measurements show unchanged condition in recent days and indicate neither land rise nor subsidence. So it's not inflating or deflating. There's that we've actually reached a balance between how much magma is moving into this shallow system from below and how much lava is erupting from the vent. Uh, so there's a clear pathway now from the storage chamber uh, up th through the shallow uh, storage zone and then out to this vent where we have this spatter cone right now. Uh, that can change as maybe the flow rates change or there's, you know, lava starts to build up and clog that conduit. If it does, um, that could change things considerably. So we have a new map of the flow field here. Let me get that little bit better sized for you here. So here, um, power plant in Svartsingi is just off the map in the bottom left corner. Here's Stora Stoke Belt. Um, this is the flow field here shown in purple. And this orange material here, and a little bit around the edges in yellow, that's all material that's been added. Uh, July 23rd in yellow, uh, 22nd it looks like there in orange. So that's just how much it's expanded. Uh, this is the road coming in on this side here. So there is a little bit of action going on here. And they have been taking tour groups out there and, and tourists have been accessing that a little bit. But again, the wind is a big variable. Right now, the wind is carrying uh, that gas right over this area. So it would not be a good time to head out there to see the lava. But that's our latest flow field map. If we kind of stick with the gases, here's the Met Office's um, gas pollution forecast, I suppose. So here you can see Basically what it is now with these west winds, it's taking that out uh, to the east, kind of move forward over time, forecast for the rest of the day is continued west winds, but then it starts to change to more of a northwesterly pattern. And that takes that gas plume uh, off the, just east of Grindavik and then out over the sea. So that would be good if that was the case, it would take that gas away from some of the populated areas here on the south coast. So that's the look at the gases so far. Another fun way to look at the gases is with our uh, wind map here. So you can see the Reykjanes Peninsula here. And again, we've got these dominantly west-east winds, at least currently right now. If we add in the SO2, we can sort of see where where that would be bad news, that red, where the uh, 
SO2 concentrations are much higher. Making a bit of a problem there for folks with um, in that in that region. Okay, let's look at the GPS data. So we talked about this with the Met Office update, but this is essentially what we're seeing here. Here's the Smart Singy Station. Here's the steady inflation. Notice that the scale here covers quite a bit of vertical uplift. So this doesn't look like much of a trend here, but this is, you know, a couple hundred millimeters of uplift just in that little space there. So there's our nice steady inflationary uplift going on up until our last eruption, which began on July 16th. Then we get the deflationary trend, but this is the thing that we're checking out now, now that we're 11 days outside of this eruption beginning is this is pretty much close to a flat line here. So we're not seeing any inflation, which would indicate we have more magma coming up from below than going out. We're not seeing any deflation with the trend going down, which would indicate, you know, that we're maybe erupting more than we have coming up from storage. Um, it's actually reached this somewhat equilibrium and this, you know, could persist for a while, not likely to continue indefinitely, but this is the trend we're seeing right now and if you look at some of the other stations you see uh, similar sorts of behaviors with the with that data with basically you know less flat lining on the gps elevation data at least in that zone there um in interferograms have shown some of the fun things here and thanks to uh viewer eric fielding who is much more of an expert on these than i am and helped me out with this one i believe i showed this one or a similar one last time but i didn't look to see what the satellite was which is incredibly important this is one i wasn't familiar with and what he's told me on these saocom satellite interferograms is that the uh, uplift in the when you look at the full spectrum of colors like from purple to purple that represents actually a much greater amount of uplift than what we see with some of the other satellites like Terrasar or the Sentinel-1 satellite. So instead of just being a few centimeters, it's actually almost 12 centimeters, 12, about 12 centimeters of uplift per color fringe there. So this you can see with this pass in early July, then again, the 21st of July, this would represent the deflation here as magma was leaving the storage zone under the power plant region. And over here, as that magma moved into and injected itself into this dike prior to eruption, this is where we saw the ground actually rise and inflate. And you can tell that a little bit by looking at the color, uh, the bands, the specific bands of color. Notice this one goes from purple to blue to green to yellow to red um, as you move in towards the interior. And on this one, it actually goes the opposite. It's you know, purple, red, yellow, green, blue. Uh, and so depending on the pattern you get, that can indicate either uplift or down dropped uh, or subsidence, downward movement. So we've got that one there. Um, let's see, I don't know. I didn't look at all of these. This one here, a little hard to tell because it's zoomed out so far. Yeah, anyway. Um, this one's interesting here. I don't know what to make of this. Maybe someone can help me out with this. I believe this is Askia. And so this is this is a pretty long period of time, though. This is almost, you know, like nine, ten months. Um, but it does indicate some movement over at Askia. Um, although not, I don't know, I don't know how to totally interpret that. This kind of like terminates here on the south and east sides, but an interesting pattern. Maybe someone can shed light on that at some point. So at any rate, uh, the eruption continues and might continue for a couple more days. We're not sure yet. You can see the lava here in the live cam view here. So we do have the eruption ongoing. Uh, it's definitely died down quite a bit from what we saw those initial few days, but that we still are pumping lava out to the surface. It's still feeding lava out onto the flow field. And the interesting now will be to see how long this eruption lasts. Will it continue for days and maybe weeks? Will it die off after another day or two? Will we see the inflationary trend on the GPS data resume, indicating we're setting the stage for another eruptive event? Um, all those things remain to be seen, but I'll come back and be with you uh, in early August after my Grand Canyon trip. So thanks so much for your support of the channel. Hope you enjoy these updates and thanks for learning along with me. Take care.